So as you can see on the right angle cross of the unexpected, we have the pressure or the drive to extend or <laughs> influence our fantasies out into others. And I woke up at three o'clock this morning and I recorded a 50 minute recognition that I had of uh, my own personal process and sharing, <laughs> externalizing my fantasies about what I imagine my life and its um, potential expression could be. And I, I haven't shared it with anybody yet, but it was just, I, I shared it with this intention of being able to recognize what I'm here for. And it was so cool looking at the humandesign.live uh, site this morning. I almost didn't record it. And then I saw somebody posted on um, the incarnation cross part of my free course saying, how beautiful an illustration my video on what it was like to be a personality son with gate 30 line three which is about sharing feelings and I do that in my classes now especially um, now when I have people I consider to be friends and I feel I can be honest and raw and there's a lot of trust there between us so the energy here with the core essence of the sun is about correction so when you see the bold blue line it's what we're learning you know successful adaptation to limitation so the energy for adaption and depth for f of a depth a deep feeling for survival or the energy which fuels holding on to feelings rather than adapting so are th these are all you know part of being human the human experiential way is about sharing our feelings with our people and we have the end of that stream which says I feel and that's from the moon the gate that says I feel like a new experience I'm bored let's do something new I want to share my feelings with you I want to share my experience with you this is the stream that is about visual stimulation I like to call it the root of pornography actually I like because I've heard Ross say it and I was like yep that's part of me <laughs> as I was growing up I heard a lot of um, you know different things and saw a lot of different things and experienced a lot of different things because I have this drive for new experiences and so as you look through the week of your life experience on the times when we start a new cycle of experience do you notice that you have more dreams more fantasies more desires more perhaps energy to pull back you know and focus on one desire at a time or go into one experience at a time that's what this 41 does it retracts the energy so that we can lock in our experience our feelings into one thing at a time so when we look at projected channels we know all but uh, let's see all but these up here there we go these projected channels are for groups okay the penta channels and the one wa channels that are projected everything else every single other projected channel that you see in this body graph one thing at a time one person at a time one awareness at a time one focus at a time when you look at the body graph do you notice those people in your life who maybe just have one projected channel and that one projected channel goes so deep it goes deep into whatever it is it's passionate about up here hi Jasmine with our 6124 our poster child for the 6124 you know those looping thought patterns that you're so so familiar with the looping thought patterns that go on and on and on about the same thing like a dog worrying a bone that one loud voice inside the mind that goes what the fuck is happening <laughs> what's happening right now what's going on right now can I make sense can I uh, know can I become aware of what's happening right now one awareness at a time so we have Pluto which is our inner truth the gate of mystery in a very mysterious planet that is imprinting it Pluto you know here the line of influence the pressure in knowing to resent challenges and demand acceptance demand acceptance of the inner truth demand its acceptance of the big why in the sky I like to call it this pressure that's bombarding all of us to go okay this is the thing 
this is the thing. I've got it. Eureka. I've got my empowerment. I've got my awareness. I've got my inspiration. And then some of us might be amplifying that and going, what the hell do I got? I don't know what I got. <laughs> Am I aware of this? It's, I'm, I'm getting overwhelmed. I'm getting really, really, um, I don't want to say confused, but uncertain. You might have certainty or uncertainty. And here with the Mars, what I'm getting, what I'm picking up is, on is that it might feel uncertain. You got this in the detriment. So we have the energy for awareness, rationalization of awareness of that inner truth. And the second line in recognition, the mental vanity that the gift of conceptualizing spontaneously can produce. So in my... Uh, sharing with you guys about my personal experience waking up at three o'clock and recording this little realization that I had um, a very personal one I woke up recognizing hey you know it's not my fault and the very first time I was very um, open about my life experience because I spent my whole life embarrassed about who I was and what I thought I'd gone through and all the things that I did wrong and whatever was my fault I remember telling my story to my teacher Darshana and she going honey you didn't have a choice it's not your fault that you played that role that you did that thing because we all have masks we all play roles we all do things that we think we're in charge of or we think we're responsible for and yet are we really we as in the eye inside of the head about the self the ego eye so where that fantasy is being grounded is in gate 31, which is about the energy for I lead in this direction. I lead in this direction. Personally, I have a seven line four. So this is the way that I'm going to externalize my experience of leadership. I'm going to influence you now, right now. I'm influencing you. Hey, if you're listening to my voice, you want to hear what I have to say? Here's what the earth is giving me as far as a voice is the success of influence based on how it is perceived so there's an external positive recognition of one's capacity to lead or an external negative projection of one's capacity to lead in the fourth line so when you look at your design let's say you had this in the moon or let's say you had this in mars as you can see here that seven if it's in the moon Hey, guess what? You have an external positive recognition of one's capacity to lead. So other people are going to look to you for leadership. Other people are going to look to you for guidance. Oh, this person knows which way we're supposed to go. Yeah. But if you've got it in Mars, you're going to have this external negative projection of one's capacity to lead. Oh, that person can't lead us. That person doesn't know where we're going. That person, if you're a non-aware uh, human being, and you've got this in your design and you're doing your darndest to try and lead people. Hey, I know which way to go. Let's go this way. This is the way to the promised land. Yeah, because I recognize patterns, says the 31. I am going in this direction and you guys better follow me because it's logical. Because I put together all the steps and this is what's next and this is what's next and this is what's next. And this is where we all need to go in order for us to survive. That's 31. And do you have a choice as far as whether it comes from moon or whether it comes from Mars? Hell no. <laughs> really. Ra would say we are dragged kicking and screaming to the body to be incarnated into the flesh. And there's so many people, you know, I chose this and I chose that. And I have no idea which one's truth. I don't know. I'm totally undefined here. But I do know that there is so much frickin' suffering in this world because of what people take ownership over, the I that thinks therefore it thinks it is, that thinks it's my fault, there's something wrong with me, I did a bad, bad thing, I should be punished. And then the third line jumps in and says, well, why don't you just punish yourself? You're not good enough, you'll never be good enough, nobody loves you, all that jazz, <laughs> jazz, all that crap, that's not you. Now, let's look at the nodal environment, the nodal environment, which is about our future direction, exclusion in the 45th gate, third line. And we see the instinct to find a way to be included in a material process. 45s 
You know, when you're looking at this in a person, they are the leaders. They are the kings, queens, rulers, pashas, emperor, empress, what have you. They are large and in charge. They are the voice, the one voice of the tribe. So when we're looking at this now in a nodal environment, we're looking at everybody being conditioned to see in that way. It's like you're putting glasses on the whole of humanity, put, put these um, materialism colored glasses on and everybody's going, well, we have to be included in this material process. And what happens if you're not included in a material process and you think you should be, I have a right, you have a responsibility. Ooh, we get angry if we're not included. We, the tribal we, you know, the, the, uh, the ego I that thinks it belongs and therefore it is other people's responsibility to give to us, give tribal language, give to us what we think we deserve <laughs> as part of the tribe, as part of the people. No, we have to, we have to, you know, give these people. And so you look around the world and you see everybody talking about who has things and who doesn't have things and who should have things. So you see people talking about raising taxes, not just talking, doing Biden raise the taxes, you know, the, here in... Uh, Arizona, our taxes, our state taxes almost what doubled. It was like 77% or something that was raised. And, and that's just the movie that we're watching. So when you see that and you recognize, hey, there's no choice, there's no fault. There's no fault that everybody's looking around trying to figure out how to be the best. You know, when I see this 26 come in and I hear myself exaggerate, I laugh because I can't help it. <laughs> the mouth starts to exaggerate. My 44 is reaching over to that 26 and the 26, you know, control of the memory of the manipulation of the tribe through framing things in a particular way that will convince them of right, wrong, good, bad, should and shouldn't, have, have to, have not, and will. Do you have the will? So the frequency this being is going through right now is about being good enough. And there's all these doubts and questions, you know, from past life experiences of not being good enough, self-judgment there always, not being good enough, doing things wrong, making mistakes, and quote unquote, quote, making mistakes takes mistake take one take two this is what everybody is being conditioned to see the mistakes we've made in uh our 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 rulers you know our our political leaders what mistakes did they make what mistakes are they making what power trip do they have what are they doing wrong wrong is a very tribal word good, bad, right, wrong. So that's what the transit is giving us, this energy for observing who has and who has not, who does and who doesn't, you know? Owe us something. Who owes us something? Because there are leaders. Leaders have a responsibility, have you noticed? <laughs> it's a great weight that gets put on your shoulders when you realize that there are people who are following you, who are looking up to you. For someone like me who doesn't have that trip as, as a, you know, hey, everybody, look up to me. Lead, I will lead you. I, I Consciously, anyway. I have a channel that is about leadership. But when somebody else is following you, you go, oops. <laughs> okay, well, I'm just doing my own thing. You can follow or not. I just, this is the way that I'm going. Can't explain it to you like the logic people can. And I don't know where I'm going. I'm just being myself in the now. I can't. I can tell you a little bit personally about the past experience, but that whole channel, nah, it's unconscious. I don't know what comes out of my mouth until it comes out of my mouth. So what are we talking about when it comes to our communication and our thinking? We're talking about who has the right principles, the right value system to ensure that everybody has what they need on the um, plane of existence that is about our tribes and our people and the 1949 being very sensitive to what it tribe its tribe <laughs> it tribe its tribe needs recognizes that there are resources that we need to use to support our communities and our families so let's tax the rich and give to the poor. Have you noticed? That's just part of the movie. 
the 19, our Jupiter, our personal law and protection in our own design, but it's something that impresses upon us from the transit, something that, you know, there's some kind of law that we have to follow. There are all these people who want things, aren't there? Everybody wants something, but really, some people are really lacking. Some people are really wanting. Some people need support. They need help. And so they're talking about giving us more stimulus, more money to help sustain and support our, our economy. And how long can that go on before it all collapses like a house of cards? How long can they keep printing money without any kind of ceiling until at one point it just crumbles, it, it disintegrates, you know? Governments going into serious debts, debts to the like we've never seen, all because, well, we have to do something and this is the only thing we can do. So where is that going to lead us? I don't know. But what I imagine with this transit, and, and this is pretty similar to what it was on Thursday as far as, um, you know, the new year, the rave new year. I did a little brief talk about that. And what I imagine would be happening because of the transits and because of this life experience that we're seeing in this part political divide and everything, did you know that there's still troops in our capital does that sound like a free country to you where we have a fair political system if they feel so unsafe that they have to keep troops keep bringing troops after you know there's always been, already been a exchange of power a peaceful transition of power i might add to where they're now putting even more troops and more troops and saying that the troops will stay there until march that sounds like someone's scared to me so if you didn't do anything quote unquote wrong, <laughs> in my own mind, yeah, thinking you did something wrong as if they had a choice, as if they had a choice. Why do you need so much enforcement of your taking over of the power of the people? Why do you need so many troops if you were in the right? Hmm. I can feel the anger bubbling inside. You know, Mars, Mars is very immature. It mutates us. This is where Mars is mutating me right now. I've got a 61, no other side. So this awareness mutating inside of you, this awareness of coming to rationalizations of inner truth. I feel powerless. I feel helpless about the state of our world because I can't personally individually do anything about it. But you know what we can do, you and me, my friends, because we know something they, the outside world, don't. We know we can follow our decision-making strategy. We know we have a personal authority. And God help me, if I didn't have that, I would be going crazy right now. If I didn't know that I was here to wait for recognition and invitation and here to be emotionally clear before I make any spontaneous movements as far as where I go in the world and who I be with and who I love and all of that belonging and all of that stuff. If I didn't know I had that, I would be so lost. And here, <laughs> let's talk about relationship values, the standards of our relating. Have you noticed? I do. I notice anytime I've got activations on the other side of the stream of capitalism have you noticed being more ambitious for the material plane venus bringing in this desire this mm, drive this is a drive that drives us to make a difference to make something out of our lives that is about bringing our tribe with us it's not at all selfish ambition it's not of course, the desire or the need, we could say the need for recognition that the 54 brings is, I need to climb up, up this corporate ladder. I need to make something of myself, but I'm not just doing it for me. I'm doing it for my people, my family, my community, my tribe. And so the conditioning of the transit is telling me, hey, now's the time. Let's go. It's time to make something of this ca capitalistic venture that you're on, human design, and how can it support more people? Let's look at the line value. The line value says, 
selectivity, this is the gate of drive, the energy to restrict relationships that hinder ambition. There's a waste of energy, conversely, in maintaining relationships which hinder ambition. So it's all about relationships in a gate. Yeah, this gate's about relationships. It's tribal, after all. Tribal is always about relationship. There is no us versus them out there in the world if there's no you and me, we, if there's no we. If there's no we, it's two standing together, shoulder to shoulder, facing, you know, bravely, boldly against the world, <laughs> then there is no tribe. So the tribe is a really important thing that we can see. So much energy driving us to want to achieve, to want to rise up, to want to make something of ourselves, not only ourselves, but also our people so that we can survive. How am I going to help? My mind always goes to how am I going to help my people survive? My people, I take ownership of my tribe, my people being my family that I live with, live with and this world that I live in, where my community is, and it's a very mm, global community in that I consider you guys to be my tribe. Let's continue. We look through the body graph and we see that there is a conjunction. Whenever there's conjunctions, there's a combination or a confluence of energies here. And personally, I have this 41 line 3 in my Mercury. It's about the energy for efficiency. Efficiency in our imagination, our desires, our daydreams, our fantasies. What can we have as an experience, a shared reality together? Saturn is bringing us some discipline, you can see. So the Saturn, in times of decrease, selfishness is justified. So the energy that fuels the feeling for personal ambition. And let's share this ambition with the world. Jupiter brings a correct kind of discipline or limitation in your life when it's in your own design. But if it's in the transit, what it can do is bring some kind of contraction here with this gate of contraction, bring some kind of limit, limitation. It brings us to this need here to share our personal ambitions with others. So I have this, I'm holding my, myself back as much as I can because I don't want to let my energy go too much over right now since I have another class at 10. But there's this energy that, that, that pulls us, that holds us back from things. Have you noticed? It, it feels like you've got a governor on your, your engine. You're at the start of this, uh, we're at the start of this rave new year and you're, you've got this engine running, it's revving, but the flag hasn't come down. <laughs> There's no flag. It can't, you can't go yet because Saturn is here holding us, you know, maybe it depends on how you're feeling this energy, this conditioning that is a visual for us and also a body a, a tactile sensing if you're sensitive now let's talk about nourishment the gate of caring we have the gate 27 that is in the line six from thanks to Uranus which brings unusualness in your own design it brings innovation it brings experimentation but in the transits it brings this energy that gives us a potential for being sidetracked. So the power and strength to be realistic in one's capacities to care and nurture, if you have it in the moon, or the power of suspicion in limiting the expression of caring. So if you've got a Pluto there in 27, or the moon is there in 27, like I do, I have the moon in, um, sorry, the nodes of the moon, <laughs> I don't know if it makes the same difference. It doesn't probably, no. But um, I have the nodal environment there. So it depends on if you have your moon there, it'll, it'll drag you into this side. If you have the Pluto there, it'll drag you into the other side, in the 27, or on the opposite side of the channel. That will bring you that spontaneous, perhaps, response to caring for someone. Let me do it for you. Let me take care of that for you. Well... We need to survive and I'm here. I care about you, says the 27. 
I, I am going to help take care of it for you. I have energy for it or not. So we become wary with this conditioning. What's unusual, what sidetracks us is a protection against an abuse of generosity. So do you recognize that aloofness to that line? Suspicion, limiting the expression of caring. Sometimes we can be very realistic about whether we can care or not for that other person. First and foremost, we have to take care of ourselves first. You learn that. If you're an undefined sacral center and you've got a 27 in line one, it says selfishness. Yeah. Must put your own mask on first before you put your child's mask on. Otherwise, if you get a drop in cabin pressure, both are you going to die. 22, Neptune. We have something that is hidden from us in our own design. Our Neptunes, look down at your Neptunes. Where you got it? I got peace and joy. What do you got? <laughs> That's hidden. Peace and joy. Gate five. For, for the transits, we see it's the gate of grace and yeah, the gate of openness so this illusion or delusion that we're being conditioned by is this perfected grace that we're all learning about the possibility for per per perfected openness through the alignment of emotional energy and awareness or mars pulling us into the detriment and innate openness there's an innate openness are we in the mood to hear what people really want or not? Is it veiled? Is it hidden from us? That grace and social interactions, that moodiness, that fear of silence, you know, Neptune being an enchanter. Are we afraid that there's no one that will listen to what we have to say? Are we afraid that there's no one worth listening to? That's something to watch out for. So as an example, my mind, you know, I um, saw a couple of messages. Thank you, Carol, for uh, messaging on Facebook because that's what really drove me to get on here and uh, go well hey <laughs> I, I thought I had a, a client at nine but um, it was actually next week that I have a client and um, so I didn't think I had the energy to do the transit and the client and the um, class at 10 and it's overcast I'm hoping the internet's okay so what you see I've done is a very different kind of news you can use. I've been talking about the energies of the transits. And I'll just briefly talk about what happens if you don't have, you know, a definition in the throat, but you do have one of these activations on the other side. Okay. So don't have definition in the throat. What happens when we have gate activations on the other side of the channel? It creates a temporary definition. Now, it's not going to make you into a manifester. It's not going to make you into a projector. But what it can do is pressure you to have some kind of need to share your feelings, speak what you think will lead us in the right direction in order to be included in the material process because you're wanting to have change and progress in your life and you're wanting now to have some kind of effect in a leadership role moving forward. So just watch for that. Watch for the voice that says, if you hear yourself, my friends, if you hear yourself say, I feel, I have to, we have to, most particularly. Right, wrong, good, bad, all that you know, domination, submission, tribal stuff. And then the 31, that is about, I lead. If you hear yourself saying these things, that's the transit talking, that's not you. That's the mind in its conditioning. If it's inside of your head about yourself, I feel like this, I feel like that. I'm bored, I wanna go have some progress. Oh, maybe we'll go to this different new restaurant. Now I'm not saying that this conditioning is bad. I'm saying, observe it and know that it's part of your consciousness. We are all experiments in consciousness. I remember saying this way before I found human design. Um, I used to channel, I used to channel, I didn't know what the heck it was. My husband called it Christos, <laughs> an energy frequency that felt very um, powerful to me anyway. When it, coursed through my body it felt very powerful and he they called it 
he called it Christos, and they spoke with a we. And it was a very deep we, the voice. It, it had an accent when I would speak that way. So when you find yourself speaking in tongues, <laughs> speaking in a foreign language to you, meaning you don't have these gates, just watch it. It's not anything to do anything about. We all hear ourselves speak with other voices that are not our own. Our own meaning the definition and the design, the consistency in the design. I speak with feel all the time because I have, I have, <laughs> the 4130. I speak with we and need and should and must and all that voice stuff because I have the 21, you know? So it's not that there's anything wrong. Those are the voices of those either awareness streams or energy streams. You just don't place your decision making on those voices that are not your own. And even so, if your definition is creating an authority and that authority is cut off from the throat, that's not your authority. Your authority is a body sensation. It's not a voice unless you're a mental projector, unless you're a self-projected projector, unless you're an ego manifester or projector. But those are going to come with body sensations. Even with the mental projector, I've heard them say, yes, but I have a sense of knowing. Sense of knowing or you know, I think, I think, I think, and they find this resonance between what they say they can do or need to do or must do or should do, but they feel the resonance inside of their body. Okay, that's throat. Now, heart. What the heart will tell you, will tell you, I need to make this promise and I need to keep it. I have to keep my promises no matter what. I can't tell you how happy I was with myself that I could actually write to you guys last night and say, hey, I can't do this <laughs> in the morning. And it's one of my design features that I would find myself saying, I can't, I can't, I can't. And then all of a sudden having the energy to go, oh, I can. <laughs> I, I have the energy. I, I, Wow, I'm here and I can do this. So just watching, you know, watching when you're when your body goes into, I have to bend over backwards in order to prove that I can, that I'm a good person, that I care, <laughs> that I can keep my promises. Because when I don't keep my promises, boy, do I feel like shit. That's the conditioning. Yeah. So the conditioning, my conditioning in the past would have led me to show up for class at eight o'clock today. Show up for that reading at nine o'clock. Show up for that 10 o'clock class and then be completely dead the rest of the day and not be able not take good care of myself so watch for that you know trying to be the best trying to prove that you are the best is definitely something that you want to watch out for if you've got activations here here because that will be turned on and that's something you don't need to prove anything there's nothing to prove when you've got an undefined heart Nothing. You're good enough exactly as you are, hey? You can love yourself unconditionally no matter what, no matter what mistakes you make, no matter what you see flies out of your mouth that, oops, I didn't mean to say that. <laughs> I, the ego I that says, I'm in control of what I say. <laughs> it's so funny, you guys. I know I sound kind of crazy, kind of mad because in the past, if I'd a, I wish I could give you a moment, we could switch spaces. You know, I wish I could give you a moment of what it was like inside of my head before human design versus now. It's so different. It's hilarious now, comparatively. And I still cry, but the cry is colored with tears of joy. Even in the deepest moments of sadness, it can suddenly flicker and I'm, I'm crying and laughing at the same time. And it feels like a release and it feels like relief and it feels like joy and it feels like wonderment to not have that pressure of having the heart. Oh, the ego eye, I have to do this. I can't go back on my promise. I said I would be there. I'm going to do what I say and damned the consequences, which for me, dishealth, dis-ease. <laughs> so I'll, I'll try to try my mind, try to continue here. We talked about that one already. 
you've got the seven, not the 31. But let's talk about it from the G center perspective. You're an undefined G. You're walking around going, oh, I've got a plan. <laughs> I've got influence. I've got to put my influence out into the world. But where's my direction? I don't know what my role is. I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing as a leader. So if I go here, maybe I'll find that direction. If I do this, maybe I'll find that correct role. Where am I going and who the hell am I? <laughs> who am I for myself, generator? Who am I for others, projector? Hopefully, if you're a projector, you recognize you are here for others. It's not your movie this trip, even though it might be about your own personal perspective and your own <laughs> as a right angle cross of contagion. My own destiny that doesn't involve a specific other being Projectors are here to guide the other. So if you're undefined in the G, you're like, guide someone? How the hell am I going to guide someone when I don't even know who I am or where I'm going? <laughs> so the mind thinks, well, if I could just play this role. And if you've got a totally undefined G center here, then nothing's happening here. And you just don't know what role or love, transcendent love, or direction is all about necessarily. You as in conditioned thinking, I you. But the you that was you before time was time that is still here and still witnessing life and its love and its experience of it has mastered identity and direction in some part of your life experience. And in this life, you're going to school. You got the PhD. Hi, Annika. PhD in the undefined identity and direction function. So, hey, who cares? So what if you, I, the little I that thinks it, therefore it thinks it is, don't identify with what your role is. Your role is multifaceted. You are a multidimensional human being and you can play any role and you can amplify any love, you know, any kind of love or any kind of direction you're a chameleon and that's your gift sacral center let's look sacral if you have an undefined sacral center and you've got the responsibility of imparting what we need to educate our tribe with when it comes to values then what happens here with the sacral center is now there's a conditioning to preserve and protect the tribe. So you might have, let's say your projector, you have a recognition. You have a recognition now that this is the way we're going to take care of the tribe, that this is the way. The way. We need to do it because people like us do things like this and this is what we should do. So you become overzealous in the not self. You think, I can't ask for help. I'm responsible. It's my responsibility. I have to take care of this even though everybody else is doing something else. And even though I'm exhausted and even though I'm fatigued and even though I'm burnt out, I'm going to subjugate my own needs to be able to take care of my tribe because I'm responsible. And what happens if this is in an undefined state? the splenic center, the gate 50, undefined, but the splenic center is undefined as well, open, it's open. And this transit comes in, ooh, now you feel like you have to hold on to that decision you made. You think, because you're rigid and inflexible, the I that thinks, you think that this is what is going to ensure our safety and this is what is going to ensure our survival. And you find your self talking and have to's and musts and should and it's if it's to be, it's up to me, it has to happen this way. Because now there's a temporary energy that's there that's sidetracking you to care about something that maybe you haven't been asked about or invited to do. And your authority over here is going, no, I'm nervous, I'm nervous, I'm nervous. And yet you make a spontaneous choice to keep a promise and to attract attention to a direction that is not your own. Isn't that sad? It, I'm trying not to be, um, it's, it's, I'm trying not to bust into laughing because it is like what Ra would say, oh, I get the joke, you know. <laughs> it is kind of funny when you see how human beings are so completely and utterly manipulated by 
the transits. The transits, the program is not your life. It is how we filter the consciousness field. It becomes conscious when we ourselves become conscious to it. When we take it in and we amplify and we recognize from this wisdom potential of being in the human design experiment, all my fellow friends, my students who are in this experiment and you're watching this happen to you inside your body and you go, wow, that thing is happening. What do I do about it? <laughs> you don't do anything. But follow your own authority no matter what. You witness, you watch, you watch the movie. This is the movie. For some of us, like I'm going into my, um, very soon, a couple weeks, my birthday, and my um, Uranus opposition a few months later. So some of this transit energy is going to be crystallized in my experience, experience for the next year or five years because um, my Chiron return will be coming about five years later. So what I want to share with you is to remember, always remember, most important thing, you don't have to do anything to ensure your survival. You know why? If you're defined splenic center, your body will do that. You as in the I you. <laughs> it's the first time I've said that. I've heard it a couple times today. The I you, you know? You know what I mean? The I that you identify with that you still think that you are. It takes so many years to detach, as my design would put it, and has seen it. It takes many, many years to detach and to disassociate from the voice inside of their head about yourself as having anything to do with your identity or who you are or what you be in this life. If I could only impart one thing, one precious, precious, precious message that I have for you in order to wrap up what we're talking about today. It would be echoing the words of Ra. You have no choice and love yourself. And when you can surrender to the fact as in the I you, the conditioned thinking I you, really you can surrender and you can let go of the responsibility that you think you have for the voice inside of your head about yourself. When you can let go of that, let me, let me put, paint a little clearer picture for you. Back in the day, I'm going to go into my personal perspective because that's a really um, rich food, rich, lots of stories there. New transit connection, just now connection. Here's Lavina's head inside of her head about herself and about others before human design. My personal perspective was skewed to power, power over, power under, control and manipulate games. The games of, let me prove to you I'm the best person for you. I'm going to be powerless. I will be putty in your hands. Mold me. I will do whatever it is you say I should do so that I can earn your love and approval. I will give myself completely and utterly to whatever it is that you want me to be. I will be whoever you want. I will do whatever you want. I will bend over backwards, change my appearance, change my ways. And what would that lead to? It would be complete and utter meltdowns <laughs> at some point when the experience of operating in not self trying desperately to prove what a good girl I was by obeying that obey love honor and obey says the tribe that's not my way so I would love honor and obey until I got to breaking point and I had exhausted myself completely and I shut down emotionally because who I became was not somebody that I loved personally it was somebody that they thought they were getting a mask that I wore, an illusion, a delusion that I had. So my mind would scheme and manipulate. How am I going to get my survival needs met? Marry somebody with money, said mom. Okay, mom, I'll do that. Found somebody, fell in love with them. It's pretty easy for me to fall in love when the sex is good. <laughs> That's the 41. And love, honor, and obey... And you'll get your reward. You'll get to have everything that you think you want. And I did. I had everything that I thought I wanted. And guess what? It's never enough when you come from the place of 
I want, I want, I want, I desire all these new experiences, everything. But it's if it's not in alignment with what your joy or your passion is, if you're not feeling empowered, if in fact you're feeling disempowered, it becomes something that is putrid in your life experience, your own mind. You hide from that. Even though on the outside, the surface gloss, oh, that person has everything. They've got the wonderful you know lifestyle they take multiple vacations per year they have multiple houses they have a summer house they have this they have that they have cars they have real estate they have rentals all those things i hid from my family when i was a real estate broker because i felt very embarrassed about how much wealth i'd amassed and then it all came crumbling down 2008 and i spiraled into a deep dark depressive state and it wasn't, it wasn't like I had a choice. It was part of the movie that I was in that I was watching, that I then became something even more deeply, remotely distanced from what my truest and highest gift and potential could be. And in that spiraling down deep into the darkness, when you've hit rock bottom and you are thinking of killing yourself, and you are institutionalized and you recognize that this is there's nowhere else to go but out out of the body you either do it and you kill yourself and you succeed i didn't or you climb back out of that shithole that you find yourself in and i can tell you that thank god it was a great ride it was a great climb out of that shithole and human design was the thing that helped me do it so I share with you my immense gratitude that each of you are here, that you're listening to my voice, and that you care enough about your own experience, your life experience, that you are experimenting with human design. This was very unexpected for me to share this kind of story. I hope it was helpful and somewhat inspiring on your journey. I look forward to connecting with you in another 40 minutes if you're coming to uh, the introduction to human design. Namaste, my friends. Oops, I see I have a question. Hang on. Can we find your talk on the Rave New Year? Yeah, I didn't um, edit it and put it up yet, Carol. So I'll ask, I'll ask if I can get that um, put up for you, Carol. I, I had a pretty dismal look on it that day, and it was only about 15 minutes. But yeah, I'd, I'd be happy to share it privately. I don't know about publicly. I don't want to bring anybody down. But yeah. Thanks for asking. I'll talk with you some more in a few. Love you guys. Bye.